Hi there, Andre here from Peak Motorcycles. This is a very short video where I'm going to be giving a first test ride to my uh, LS2 Explorer carbon helmet with the Wannabe's GoPro mount on the front. So I'm not going to talk a lot about the helmet and the mount as such because I've done a quick video about that. But what this is really to look at is what it's like to actually ride in. Uh, it's a beautiful evening here in the Peak District. It's about 15 Celsius, which I guess is mid 60s Fahrenheit. And I'm just going to go and ride around, um, see what it's like with the GoPro on it, see how well the vents work, because I couldn't really do that when I did the other video, see how well the top visor works, how noisy it is, kind of all that sort of stuff. So yeah, uh, before I start, there's just a couple of things I just want to show you. So first of all, it's where all the vents are on this. I don't think I did this in the other video. So it has these side vents. Uh, there's one of those, and that seems to actually vent the air out through the back there. Again, exactly the same on this side. And then there's two vents on the top that work in kind of the same way. You can see those, it's just these that slide backwards and forwards. And then the very last one is under there. If you can't see it, believe me, there is a vent just inside here. So yeah, so between those, uh, there is actually quite a lot of ventilation in this helmet. Now, in hot weather, I think that's ideal. We don't get a lot of hot weather here in the UK. So I'm interested to see how it works with all the vents all the way open and just see whether, whether I can use that. So anyway, uh, I'll head out and we'll, we'll see what it's like. So this is my first ride out and test of a few things. The main thing I want to see is what this LX LS2 Explorer Carbon is like uh, to ride in. And it's a Friday evening, it's about 15 Celsius here in the UK. It's just a lovely evening, so I thought I'd head out on my GS uh, and give it a bit of a try. So my GS does have a windscreen, so that's pushing some of the air over me at the moment. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, we'll see what it's like. So currently I'm riding with the visor up. Um, not going very quickly, about 30 miles an hour. And yeah, it's fine. So I'll try putting the visor down. Hopefully that gets a bit quieter uh, for the microphone inside the helmet. It, yeah, it certainly closes better than the one did on my um, Shoebirth E1, which was always a bit of a push to get the last bit to click. Uh, I am riding into the sun, so a perfect chance to try out the integral sun visor. looks fine. In fact, if anything, it's a little bit cloudy. I'm wondering if that's just because uh, I've not cleaned it since I got it. That's definitely something I need to do when I get when I get back. But yeah, it's a, it's a really wide field of vision and it does come with a pin lock. What I've found in the past is sometimes pin locks don't work quite so well on really big visors just because it's a big ass to keep that seal all the way around. But it'll be interesting to see how, how this goes. Another thing I want to check out on this ride is how the Wannabe's uh, GoPro mount works. So if you can see that, that's mounted right on my chin. Uh, I've got the microphone installed inside, so hopefully all of that is fine. One of the things that I did want to do with it was to be able to, to see if it was recording or not. And unfortunately, it's in such a great position that it's not obscuring my field of vision whatsoever. But that also means that I can't see the screen. In fact, I can't see the camera at all from here. Might be hard to believe from looking at the camera, but uh, yeah, believe me, that is the case. So I think there are a few things I can do with this. So one is if it looks like this position is pretty good and actually I don't need to see it, um, then that's one. Um, another thing is that because of where it is, it's actually pretty easy just to have a quick glance in my mirror, my side mirror, and just see it. Because if I can see my chin, which I can, uh, I can pretty much see whether the camera's recording or not. And again, maybe that's enough. We shall see. Uh, if I did need to lift it up, it's easy enough just to get one of those inline supporting bars that GoPro make that just lift the camera up a little bit. One thing I'm, I am interested to see with this helmet is how it performs at speed and just how cool it is. So, as I mentioned in the intro, there are quite a lot of vents on this helmet. There's uh, one in the chin, which is probably obscured a little bit by my GoPro. But then there's uh, two on the sides, uh, two on the top. And if you open them all up, it does look like there's actually a load of air to get through it. And it certainly feels like that. I was wondering whether the consequence of that is that it was also going to be rather noisy. Uh, but we shall see. I can certainly feel the air blowing through it and because it's only 15 Celsius here today, uh, I don't know what that is in, in Fahrenheit, must be what, 60-ish, uh, something like that, mid-60s. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it certainly feels cool. Um, I'd probably have to close some of these vents as this ride goes on. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, so far so good. So another thing to mention, uh, I know that a lot of people have complained about the wobbly visor um, the wobbly sort of sun visor on the Shoebirth and for me uh, that wasn't really a problem but certainly the visor on this helmet is a lot more sturdy. Ok, 
Okay, we have a big truck coming down from up there. It should be interesting on this corner. So yeah, it definitely feels quite drafty, which I guess will be nice in hot weather. Um, I think in this cold weather, it's uh, maybe less than ideal, but I'm gonna ride with it like this for a bit, so if I can find a faster bit of road. And then if I can, I'll ride some of it with the vents all the way open, and then I'll maybe close a few of them or even close all of them, just to see if that helps a lot with the noise and the temperature. Really is stunning out here today. This is just at the, just above the Blue John Cavern, which is a, uh, uh, which is a show cave that they have here in the Peak District, very close to where I live. And just beyond that, you can see the Hope Valley um, down the down the hill. Third over to my left, you can see the uh, the Great Ridge, which separates Castleton from Edale. And what I'm now going down is called Winnett's Pass, which is a pretty steep road. They do a hill climb event here for bicycles uh, each year. Um, but yeah, it's the sort of place where you really want to make sure you've got some good brakes because it's quite narrow. Uh, there are cars going in both directions, but as you'll see when we go down it, it is kind of steep. Just like this guy up. And over and down we go. I did think that maybe I should start doing some videos about some of these sorts of roads in the Peak District, which really are quite stunning, uh, if that's interesting to people. But I always think with things like this, it's much more fun to ride than it is to watch somebody else riding it. So I've held off so far. Maybe when I run out of other content, that'll be on the list. But yeah, as you can see, it's this very steep winding road down. The two cars I can see ahead of me have got their brakes on all the way down. I'm sure I'll smell, I'll smell a bit of their brakes when I get there. Luckily my GS has got that much engine braking that actually doesn't need much uh, in terms of the actual brakes. But yeah, it's kind of a stunning place. Uh, hopefully it's picked up uh, by the cameras uh, just to see what it's like. Um, I think if I come and, come and did this first thing in the morning we'd get light from the opposite direction. Oh, it's a broken down car. Yeah, we get light from the opposite direction. I guess that is a car who's come down here and has, uh, yeah, missed that corner. Anyway, it's not very long and it just brings you out at the bottom end into the village of Castleton. I'm riding out to the village of Bradwell now. Um, I did turn the camera off for a short while. One thing I did notice when I went to turn it off was the one on my chin mount had actually dropped forward a little. So I think for my bit down when it's uh, that I suspect the camera is actually slightly forward angled. Anyway, uh, put it back into the right position now. I'm hopefully going to get up to a bit more speed coming up here. It is a 50 limit. There is a bit more of a breeze. I can certainly hear uh, a lot more wind noise. I mean, I can hear everything around me. Um, it doesn't doesn't feel particularly cold though, uh, even with all those vents open. Now, I guess I should probably try this again uh, on a, on a, my CB1000R or a bike that doesn't have a windscreen, because there is a certain amount that the GS does push over the top, even though I've got it in the lowest position here. But still, there is a faster bit coming up on the top of the hill, so I'll uh, I'll see how it performs through there. Now, there's a little bit of wind noise. Uh, one thing I did notice, which is uh, slightly annoying and maybe I just need to get used to it is that on the visor itself uh, the little bit that sticks out that lets you lift it up is actually dead center so maybe if you don't have a GoPro on it's not really a problem but if like me and you do you know there's nothing sort of on the edge around here that I can use to open the visor so I do need to reach around to the front uh, I sometimes ride with the visor just open just a little bit uh, and it's useful to have it there because it's not quite the same reach or it doesn't my hand's not going to get in the way of the camera uh, it doesn't look like I can do that here uh, but then maybe with all the ventilation I also don't need to ride uh, with the visor open a little bit it really is just such a cracking evening so glad to be out okay last last long bit and I think that after this 
Uh, I'll probably stop recording because I think I've probably got enough. Um, it is noisy. Um, I think, yeah, I've certainly reached that conclusion. I do have the Akrapovich HP uh, exhaust on my, my GS, but that sounds pretty noisy inside the helmet and I don't have any earplugs in. So that's me running at about 60 miles an hour, which is the limit for this road. There is quite a lot of airflow. My, my head is feeling nice and cool. Uh, so I think for that, it's great. Uh, in terms of the noise, it is quite noisy. I don't have earplugs in at the moment. I normally do ride with them. I was just curious to know what this helmet was like without them. So I think that I should try it again with them. But yeah, I guess that's the price you pay for having uh, a visor on the top and lots of ventilation is that there's lots of places where air can get into the helmet and all of that at speed makes for a bit of noise. I'm mostly going to be using this helmet for dual sport riding on my CRF 300. So for that, I think maybe it'll be perfect. Time will tell. Um, yeah, but so, so far so good. The only thing really that, that's bothering me a bit is that I don't have the little catch here to open it. They do have to go to the front, but I guess that's probably not such a big deal. So that's it, I am safely back home. Uh, it is going dark now. There is still a little bit of light in the sky uh, that I can just about show you, but to all intents and purposes, yeah, it's, it's dark. So yeah, that was a really useful test of the LS2 Explorer Carbon. Uh, quite noisy, not too noisy though, uh, and I wasn't wearing earplugs. Uh, definitely a lot of ventilation, but again, not too much. I didn't actually get cold, even though I think it's probably now down into single figures. So yeah, all good. I'll put this up as a Wednesday evening video and uh, hope it's been interesting and useful. And if it has, maybe I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.